Hello and welcome to the Thursday, August 22nd, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we have a diary by Michael Tiggs, one of our Sands.edu undergraduate interns and He's writing some of the details about a campaign that I think I mentioned before when he published the similar data for his employer. But Michael basically was able to figure out the compromise of medical imaging software and in part our new registered DNS list did help in actually figuring out what was going on. The software in question is called Micro DICOM, at least that's how I think uh, you pronounce it. DICOM is an imaging format that's used uh, for medical images. It stands for Digital Imaging and Communication in Medicine, so it's really uh, just an acronym. The affected user actually installed this particular application by falling for a lookalike domain that was advertised via email. It's called microdicom.com info not dot com as the actual domain name and also the i in micro was replaced with a lowercase l which at first sight looks close enough where you may confuse it with the legitimate domain name as part of a diary michael goes over some of the python scripts he used in order to find these malicious domain names using our newly registered domain api and the malicious site is actually still up and running. It still offers a lookalike for the legitimate uh, microdicom uh, site. Now, luckily, it's hosted behind Cloudflare. And if you are going to the website now, you will receive a Cloudflare warning advising you that it is likely a phishing site. Well, you can bypass that warning, but that will hopefully uh, discourage people from downloading software from that site. In addition, the actual binary that's still offered from that website is now triggering an alert in Microsoft Defender. Slack AI is a platform built on top of Slack, the messaging platform that allows you to apply large language models and the searching and analysis that comes with that to your Slack data. It's typically installed for an organization. So Slack AI has access to all the Slack content for the particular organization. And that's sort of where a little bit the problem comes in. AI is cool, access control isn't quite as cool. So the platform is pretty good in AI, but not so good in access control. In particular, once you start playing with prompt injection. The issue was uncovered by Prompt Armor, a company that as the name implies, does deal with tools and such to protect your AI systems. And in this case, and that's sort of typical for prompt injection, the system isn't really able to distinguish between prompts created by a developer and prompts created by a user. This trick was then used in order to send a prompt that would request a Slack AI to replace a keyword in the answer with its API key that was rendered as a clickable URL. Clicking on the URL would then essentially send this API key to the attacker's web server, which could then be used to launch additional attacks. To make things worse, Slack had a hard time understanding this particular vulnerability when it was first reported to them. They initially didn't quite understand what was going on, and only after publication of the vulnerability's details did apply a fix. And as always, more details in the link in the show notes. And ESET security is stating in a blog post that they're seeing more abuse of progressive web applications. Uh, these are, well, web applications that behave somewhat like a native application, particular on Android and iOS. The way this usually works is you're going to a website and then it will 
ask you if you would like to install an application on your phone. This is not a native application, so it does not have to comply with App Store requirements and the like. Instead, it's really just a web page that looks more like a native application and the icon that you're installing on your device's desktop is really just a link to the web page. But since they are looking somewhat like native applications, users trust them differently. They don't really recognize them as a web application. And the result is that phishing sites are tricking users into installing these applications, which then makes it easier to later harvest credentials. Interesting trick and maybe something to include in awareness material. A network storage device vendor QNAP implemented a new ransomware defense as part of its security center. This will monitor any suspicious file activity on your system. I've seen this uh, before being done by other software. And essentially what it's often looking for is either write access to a lot of files or the use of encryption functionality and encryption APIs uh, using and accessing a lot of files. There have in the past been some false positive issues, uh, but well, uh, give it a try if you're using QNAP and let me know how well it works for you. And the listener will request a quick shout out to the Boston Security Camp. Always love those uh, little local uh, conferences here. Well, actually not sure how little it is, but uh, still anyway, I uh, hope everybody's having fun there and have fun sharing what's going on. This particular event is focused on higher education. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for recommending, subscribing, liking, commenting. And of course, as usual, thanks for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.